All right, another dramatic situation that we are watching down in Georgia. So Georgia's governor's race is uh, in 2022. Uh Was looking like it might be a matchup between current Republican governor, Brian Kemp, who of course got crosswise with Trump and the MAGA movement when he wouldn't just like, you know, brazenly hand the election, illegally hand the election to Trump. When he wouldn't indict his own election, state's election infrastructure. Exactly. He had to so he got crosswise with them. And now because he has fallen out of favor with some of the Republican base for doing the right thing, he has a very tough competitor in the Republican primary. Let's throw this tear sheet up on the screen. This is from Greg Bluestein. I don't know if you guys remember, we had him on a bunch yep. when we were at Rising. Yes, um, just as an analyst, when we were leading up to the presidential elections, fantastic reporter down there for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. We'll try to get him back on uh, this show at some point to break down this race as well. Former U.S. Senator David Perdue is jumping in this race, plans to challenge Georgia Governor Brian Kemp in the Republican primary next year, according to multiple people with knowledge of his decision, setting up what he describes as a divisive contest between two of the state's leading GOP figures ahead of a likely general election matchup with Stacey Abrams. So Purdue told allies, this is more reporting from Bluestein here, he was motivated to join the race because he fears that Brian Kemp cannot defeat the Democrat again. Now, keep in mind, uh, Purdue just lost his Senate bid to John Ossoff. Yes. Okay, so he just lost in the state, at least significantly in part because of Trump and his, all of his stop the steal nonsense which effectively de-energized the Republican base and handed Democrats both of those Senate seats in those runoff elections. Um, Apparently, the former president has publicly encouraged Purdue to run. He recently warned that, quote, the MAGA base will just not vote for Kemp. Kemp, though, has his own allies in the state. The Georgia Chamber has backed Kemp. And actually, I think they were reluctant about him in the past. They've had sort of divided loyalties there. Also worth remembering, another thing you might remember David Perdue for is of all of the senators and their stock trading scandals. Yes. Oh, yeah. He is actually the worst, the most, just in terms of the number of trades and Mm -hmm. how active he was in the market during his time. Especially during the coronavirus. During coronavirus, but also with regards to defense stocks and other things Mm -hmm. that his, the committees that he sat on had direct insight into. So this guy was really bad in terms of sort of corrupt potential corrupt stock trading deals, but sets up quite a match there in the Republican primary. I looked it up. Um, Kemp is still overall uh, decently, he has net positive approval rating of plus 10%, but the reason it's as high as it is, and it's still not amazing, it's 44% approved, 34% disapproved. That was as of, um, right. I think, a couple of months ago. A significant number of Biden voters actually support him. So that's part of what's propping him up. In a Republican primary, the landscape is pretty tough for him, even though he is the incumbent. This is going to be a very interesting test to me because Virginia basically had zero stop to steal in it. Glenn Youngkin was like, get the hell out of here. I want nothing to do with you, Donald Trump. This is Trump front and center having to try and win back David Perdue. Look, he's probably going to win the primary, almost certainly. Uh, But David Perdue is going to have to try and win the Glenn Youngkin suburban voters of Fulton County and around the city of Atlanta, traditional Republicans. Republicans who went and voted for John Ossoff, for Warnock, and for Joe Biden, while also trying to drive out MAGA base. Glenn Youngkin was able to do that because he folk, well, look, he just rode, you know, the discontent all the way to the governor's office, didn't really play footsie or whatever would stop the steal. And they, in Virginia, there's a couple different ways you can run a primary. Yeah, that's right. They decided to not have um, the type of primary that we think of where everybody just goes to the polls. Effectively, the party apparatus right. chose Youngkin right. so that he didn't have to try to appeal to the MAGA base That's too hard point. during his primary. Well, because they wanted to avoid a Corey Stewart situation, which is what happened previously. He almost knocked off Ed Gillespie, and the Corey Stewart's like a Confederate sympathizer. And they were like, we're never going to have this again. So this is essentially what it means. A hard-fought primary where David Perdue prevails over Kemp, which Stop the Steal at the center, makes the real test of, is Stop the Steal enough to 
either turn off or not drive out those suburban voters who traditionally would have come out for a Republican in a wave election like 2022. And it also comes to the fact of, I don't know enough about the Georgia primary system about how exactly it works, but Kemp is really making sure that he brands himself as like MAGA in policy, but not obviously on Stop the Steal where the divider is. He has a statement in reaction to Purdue. Let's put it on their screen. And yeah, I mean, basically what he's saying there is Governor Kemp has a proven track record of fighting the radical left to put hardworking Georgians first, while Purdue is best known for ducking debates, padding his stock portfolio during a pandemic. True and losing winnable races. All true. All true. By the way, <laughs> Purdue is also the former CEO of Dollar General. So you're telling oh, me that he was that. up to uh, some shady stock? I never would have thought something from Dollar General, which is apparently now, no, Dollar Store. One of them is now the Dollar 25, not the Dollar Store, which is kind of interesting. Um, but you can see here, he says, Purdue's only reason for running is to soothe his own bruised ego <laughs> because his campaign for U.S. Senate failed to inspire voters at the ballot box twice, <laughs> which is... Pretty savage. That being said, I think Kemp is going down in flames. The other question, too, is that who is the Democrat? Well, it was just announced. Let's put it on the screen a couple days ago. Stacey Abrams is going to be gunning for the Georgia governor's race in 2022 as well. Now, Stacey Abrams, being a much more identitarian candidate, yes, she did come close, but that was in the blue wave of 2018. I see it almost impossible for her to replicate the same level of success in 2022. 22 in what's clearly going to be a red wave election. Yeah. I just don't know how this plays out, Crystal. It could come to the fact where Stop the Steal and Trump, who's going to be deeply involved in Georgia because also Herschel Walker, he wants him to run. I think he's going to be on the ground in Georgia much more. They Stop the Steal, they put Georgia really at the center of you know the whole ballot conspiracy and all of that. Trump is not going to be able to resist it in the same way that uh, he was in Virginia. He will be on the ground. It is certain that if there was a Trump-style candidate in Virginia, he would have lost as governor. Yeah. There's just no question. So yeah. is Trump still going to be able to override the red wave and all of that in order to stop and potentially keep Stacey Abrams in the White House? At the same time, she is not the person I would have chosen or anybody would have chosen in order to run and try and prevail in that type of environment. So the wins are really against both of these candidates, and I think it's more about who's going to do the most harm to them. Personally, I'm going to bet on Trump because I think he's just so noxious and odious to so many people that that will keep them from turning out to vote, which could move in a 1% margin election in Abrams. But look, the the likely favorite is probably whoever wins the Republican primary, mm -hmm. which is probably David Perdue. Yeah. Sad, in my opinion, that you can endorse this nonsense and still get elected just because people hate Joe Biden so much. But that's more of an indictment of Joe Biden. Yeah. So. I mean, listen, if we just think about it, taking all of those factors out and think about 2018 was a great election year for yeah. Democrats right. and Stacey Abrams still lost. Mm -hmm. Um, now she's going to be going up against, you know, either Purdue or potentially Kemp. Kemp is the incumbent, so that gives him an advantage. But even if it's Purdue, 2022 is not going to be a good no, year for Democrats. Right. So when you just compare, so much of what we've we've talked to you guys about is the fact that all of these individual factors, sadly, actually weigh a lot less than whatever the national mood is. Yeah. All the politics quality. are so national now, candidate quality, whether we like Stacey Abrams or hate her, like Kemp or Purdue or hate him, it's so much more about what the national mood is. And Virginia, a state that Biden won by 10 points, has just been won by Republicans. Yeah. Now they ran a good race and Trump stayed out of it and all those things. Georgia is already a much more difficult climb for Democrats. Virginia is effectively a blue state at this point. Mm -hmm. Georgia is not. Um, Georgia, you would still have to say, is a red state that is trending towards Democrats, but it's not there yet. So it would require an extraordinary year and an extraordinary performance by Stacey Abrams. Is 2022 likely to provide that kind of landscape for her? Very doubtful. The only chance that they have is that Trump just makes it so toxic for suburbanites that they, you know, I could see them very much splitting their, their ticket but I, I think the national wins are what you would be most likely to bet on in Georgia. So we'll see. That's why this contest is so interesting. What happens to the Republican primary? What does the influence of Trump look like? How do the national wins, how are the national wins in 2022? Is there any room to escape the nationalizing of every single race? 
um, if you have Trump coming in and being a noxious force and turning off a lot of voters. So those are some of the questions that we're going to be exploring there. Yeah, that's right. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.